Western countries have announced multiple military packages since the invasion. We hear the numbers all the time. $100 million package, $250 million package. But what exactly is in these packages? What weapons are the Western countries giving Ukraine? Well, broadly speaking, there are seven categories. Aircraft, drones, artillery weapons, anti-tank missiles, anti-aircraft missiles, small arms and armored vehicles, seven. And these are the staples of modern day warfare. Now for the specifics. Ukraine has both long-range and short-range artillery weapons. The long-range ones include the HIMARS and the M270s. HIMARS is made by the United States. The M270s are made by Britain. These are long-range precision weapons. They can hit targets up to 80 kilometers away. And how many of them does Ukraine have? Around 12 HIMARS, but the M270 count is not publicly available. Next, the short-range artillery, the howitzer guns. Ukraine has received more than 200 heavy artillery units from NATO. This includes the M777 from America, the French Caesar, and the German PZH-2000. These are superior to the Soviet-era ones being used by Ukraine. But the problem is, it's new technology, so Ukrainian soldiers are taking time to adjust. Not the case with the next weapon, drones. Turkey has been sending its Bayraktar TB2. The U.S. has sent almost 700 switchblade drones. Now, these are kamikaze weapons. They carry armor-piercing rounds, which means you can take out tanks or armored convoys. Next is air defense systems. More than 2,000 portable systems have been sent so far. These are handheld weapons, like the Stinger missiles. They can only target aircraft inside a short radius. The long-range systems include the S-300 missiles. Slovakia donated theirs to Ukraine. The U.S. has promised to send two NASM defense systems, while Germany is planning to send 30 Gepard anti-aircraft guns. Both weapons are yet to reach the battlefield. Next is armored vehicles. Ukraine has received 300 Soviet-built tanks from Poland and the Czech Republic, Mastiff armored vehicles from the U.K., and Bushmaster vehicles from Australia. Germany was supposed to provide its Leopard tanks, but the deal is on hold. Now for the most important weapon, which is aircraft, air superiority is extremely important in modern day combat, and that's where the West is lacking. The US and the Czech Republic are providing Mi-24 helicopters. But guess how many fighter jets? Zero. NATO has not given a single fighter jet to Ukraine. In March, Poland had considered letting Ukraine use its MiG-29 fleet, but the Pentagon rejected that plan. Earlier this month, Slovakia announced a similar proposal. But once again, there is no progress. So the Western game plan is clear. Send weapons to keep Russia bleeding, but not deadly ones that can help Ukraine land a decisive blow and escalate the war. Who are the big suppliers in Ukraine? America has committed military aid worth $24 billion, the UK $2.5 billion, Poland $1.8 billion, Germany $1.4 and Canada $0.8 billion. So the US has spent more money than the next 10 countries combined. And that's where Ukraine is getting its weapons from. What about Russia? Well, you could ask, why does Russia need assistance? They are a nuclear power after all, one of the leading defense exporters in the world. Why do they need help? Well, war can humble even the mightiest, and Russia's case is something similar. U.S. intelligence reports say the Kremlin wants to buy Iranian drones. In fact, top officials from Moscow have visited Iran twice. Just think about what this means. It's like Ghana importing cocoa, or Brazil buying coffee. The Ukraine war has completely reversed the old equations. A big example of that is China. In the 1990s, Russia was a senior partner. They exported jets, helicopters, missiles to China. The Russians exported to China, but now the role has reversed. In 2020, China's defense budget was three times that of Russia's. They're building their own jets, their own aircraft carriers, and their own missiles. A lot of these may be copies, but the fact is the junior partner is now leading the relationship. China is providing military supplies to Russia, like aircraft engines, electronic equipment, but nothing lethal so far. No weapons or fighter jets or artillery. But here's the bigger question. Does Russia want China's help? The US intelligence suggests they do. They say that Russia has requested help from China, but Beijing denies that such a request was made.
So right now, China's support is more political than military, at least on the record. Having said that, it does put a question mark on Russia's capabilities, its abilities. They make up 20% of global arms sales. They're the second biggest seller on the defense market. So Russia's failures or setbacks will be closely watched. If their defense industry struggles, many countries will feel the pinch, including India. Let me give you an example. The Indian Air Force was planning to upgrade 85 Sukhoi jets this year. The current model is the Su-30. The upgrade is called Su-30M2, what many experts call the Super Sukhoi. But the plan has been derailed. Western sanctions have put off the crucial weapons upgrade. The fact is, the longevity of this war is not a good look for Russian arms. It is also worrying for countries buying from Russia. You have endless Western weaponry on one side, and then you have Russia alone on the other. It is bound to drain Putin's arsenal. So the politics of this war has blunted Russia's military edge. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.